React just got a major update in version 19. But before you get alarmed about how much time it'll take to learn a new version of React, I want to give you some good news. React 19 is less about the code you have to write and more about the code you don't have to write anymore. Let's take a look at what React code you'll be able to remove in React 19, plus some new features it offers to help you build your React projects faster. As of today, React 19 is not yet a stable release. So if your React version is less than 19, you can install the Canary version of React to start using these features today. The biggest part of this new version is the React compiler. Most of the features that are in React 19 are due to the compiler. So what does it do? The React compiler will convert your React code into regular JavaScript. The main benefit of this is to improve your overall app performance. But what's even better is that it removes the need for you to think as much about performance. That means you no longer have to use manual memoization tools like use callback, use memo, and memo. These tools were necessary to prevent unnecessary re-renders, but they were hard to use properly, even with React reminding you to use them in the console. In this code, for example, use callback prevents the increment function from being recreated on each re-render, and use memo is used to recompute the double count value only when count changes. But now, the new compiler optimizes your React code automatically, so you can completely remove any performance hooks you previously had. And it gets even better. In React 19, you also no longer need to use the forward ref function. Up until now, if you wanted to pass a ref to a child component, you would first create a ref, then pass that ref as a prop to your child component. But to access it, you had to use forward ref. Now, without forward ref, take a look at the difference. We can pass ref as a prop and use it just like we would any other prop, which is a really nice improvement. But there's even more React code to remove. You can do that with the new use hook, which lets us load a number of different resources asynchronously. Use can resolve promises or context. It's a multi-purpose hook, which means it can effectively replace two major hooks. It can replace use effect for things like data fetching, and it can replace use context for reading context data. In the past, if you wanted to fetch data from an API with useEffect, you first needed to make the API request inside useEffect, then put that return data somewhere, usually in a state variable with useState, and finally display that updated state in the UI after handling loading and error cases. Fetching data with the useHook, on the other hand, involves resolving the fetch function, which returns a promise. While fetching data, you use the React Suspense component to show a fallback UI, and once the promise is resolved, we can show the fetch data in the UI. And all this is a lot cleaner and easier to read than with use effect. To read data from React context before React 19, you used the use context hook, like in this example where we're displaying the user's name. You first create your context, then wrap the context provider around the components that will use the context data, and then read that data with use context by giving it the context object. But now, use can consume context for us as well. Just replace use context with use, and you're done. Directives are another big but simple change to React. If you've used Next.js lately, you've probably already seen them. Directives are just strings, which we can add to the top of component files. Directives let us tell React where we want to run a React component, on the client with use client, or on the server with use server. Now, actions are a great new feature that make working with forms a lot easier. Actions are just functions that are called when a form is submitted. These functions are connected to the action prop of any form element. And with React 19, actions can now be executed on the server or client. Here's a simple client action example where we're alerting the user what they typed into an input. For this example, you first write use client at the top of your file to make sure it runs on the client. Then connect the form action function to the action prop of the form. And if you name the input, you can access the input's value by writing form data get name. However, if your action is asynchronous, you won't know exactly when your form submission will finish. To prevent the form from being submitted again before it finishes, you can use the use form status hook from React DOM. It'll give you information about when the submission is pending. And this is helpful for doing things like disabling the submit button during a form submission. Here's how it works. 
you'll first create a nested component inside your form. Inside that component, you'll call useFormStatus to get the pending property, and finally pass the pending property to the disabled prop. But what if you want the data returned from an action function? For that, you can use a new stateful action hook called useFormState. It's pretty similar to the useState hook, except it uses an action function to set the new state. To make a simple counter using a form, you first give useFormState an action function to call and an initial state value. When the action is called, you can access both the previous state value and the form data that was submitted. Finally, to set state, you return the new state from the action and use it in your component. A more advanced use case for useFormState is an Add to Cart button for an e-commerce app. To set this up, you pass an Add to Cart action to useFormState. The product ID is on a hidden input, which is passed to form data when the form is submitted. Within the Add to Cart function, you use that ID to check if the product can be added to the cart, and finally return a message to the user telling them whether the operation was successful or not. But making the user wait for the result of an action isn't a great experience for them. So what can you do to fix it? This is a great use case for the new Use Optimistic hook, which performs an optimistic update. It's ideal for real-time apps such as a chat app to immediately update the user interface with what the user submitted. If a user submits a message, you could perform an optimistic update and tell the user the message is being sent and afterwards update it with the server state when it is actually added to the database. To add this functionality, you would first create a separate piece of state for your messages and then pass that state to the use optimistic hook. Within the action, you then perform an optimistic update and this is a temporary update to add the new message to state while you're waiting on the server's response. And when it comes back, you can replace the temporary client state with your actual server state. And that is React 19 in a nutshell. Now, if you want to lock in everything in React 19, I've made a complete guide that covers everything you need to know, with a complete cheat sheet of all the concepts, all the code in this video, plus live examples for you to use right now. You can grab all that for free at reactbootcamp.dev. I hope you learned a lot in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.